My name is Jordan Pearson. I'm from Torbay in Devon. I've been a youth worker, I've been a support worker, and I've even ran my own community centre. And throughout those journeys, I've met so many ordinarily kind people that don't get the recognition that they deserve. So this is my attempt to recognise them. I think kindness is within all of us. It costs nothing to be kind, but it probably means the most. We're looking for kind people that are passionate about what they do and really trying to make a huge difference in their community. These people are the backbone of our society, giving one thing that you can't get more of, their time. In this series, my friend Rach from Part-Time Working Mummy joins me as we travel up and down the country in our search for ordinary kindness. This week we find ourselves in the old market town of Banbury to visit Sheikh Abdul Aziz El Bambaj Majid, or Banbury Mosque. It's not the mosque, however, that we've come to see. It's the people inside going the extra mile, and then some, to help feed the local community during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. So I moved to Banbury in 1999 um, with my family. I just had the one girl then at, at that time. We moved with my husband's work. And um, my, my little girl went to the local village school in Chaycombe. And then I had two more children, another boy and a girl. And then years went very quickly. So I was teaching at the local school that they were at the school. Uh, it was predominantly white. And so I had very little interaction with the community in Banbury. Um, so I think my youngest was about 13, 14. And I always said to my husband that when they get to an age where they're old enough, I want to go back and study Islam because I didn't know much about my religion. I sort of knew there was gaps in my learning. Um, but I was flicking through a Tesco magazine, you know, the Tesco free magazines. And in there, there was an article about, um, at that time, it was like landfill and what food was happening. And there was so much food going to waste and so on. And supermarkets were giving this food and you could use it in charities and stuff. So I inquired about it, just openly just asked them and they said, yeah, that's fine, but you need to have a charity. And I wasn't in, confident enough to open a charity of my own. I didn't know where to start really. So I thought, who can I ask? And I sort of sat with the booklet thinking about it. And then I approached the mosque. We started off, we didn't expect it to be so successful. Uh, starting off with a, a few boxes of uh, fruit and veg and, and a, a bit of grocery and now you know, having a purpose-built fridge area and a storage area. It's, it's fantastic to see people, especially during the COVID uh, outbreak, when people were really desperate, you know, seeing people come here on, on a daily basis and uh, filling up. You know, it gave you sort of the satisfaction in your heart that uh, you're doing a good job. And, and the praises that we get from the public, it's, you know, it's a very good feeling to have. Uh, when you when you sort of see the children, the, the, the struggling parents coming. So months pass and, uh, you know, I'm thinking, oh God, I've got the food, what am I going to do? So I, was, I started getting the food, so I used to just come at night, drop the food off outside the mosque in bags and just leg it home, thinking nobody's seen me, not realising that there's a camera and they know who's <laughs> dropping the food off and everything. So obviously they saw that, you know, I met well and I wanted to help. So they sort of warmed up to say that she was, I was genuine. I came here to help and I wanted to help and make a difference. So very soon it was established and we had a fridge outside the veranda for about 18 months, but it grew so quickly and the community sort of welcomed it as in like the cohesion was amazing. I recollect Yasmin, I think she sent me a message. I ignored it <laughs> <laughs> and she sent me about three more emails. Then uh, we kind of uh, caught up with each other in the mosque. Uh, she kind of discussed what she wanted to do and what she can do. I said, great, fantastic idea, but there's a block. Uh, I need to take it back to the trustees uh, and see what they say. Uh, I agree with it, but whether they agree with it or not, we'll find out later and I'll get back to you. So it was a slow start, but uh, we got there in the end. And how did, what, what was their reaction when you took it to them? Uh, a negative one to start off with. Uh, tell the truth, in the first thought we thought, you know, that's just for 
No, because we never have this experience before. I mean, never heard about this food bank or all these things, you know. So we thought just uh, she had, but then she said, no, no, we're not go ahead with that. We want to do it. So we said, okay, then let's go. And uh, but after that, you know, we realized that was a brilliant idea. And uh, it did really, uh, really help, you know, our community because before in the mosque, you know, the only Muslim people come, come and do the prayer and do the, all the activities they was doing. But when we, alhamdulillah, opened the food bank, uh, with the food bank, you know, so that our mosque has become like uh, for everybody. It's just such a great project because it's working on that basic human principle that we should help each other and we should be kind. And that's how this mosque operates. And I really feel very strongly and passionately, even if you can only give a few hours to do something like that, it's just what we should all do. We work with our partners, uh, Citizens Advice Bureau, so they do the assessment for us because I, I felt that I was in a position to do assessments of people to get personal information and ask them if they were eligible for food or not. I wanted some professionals to take that on board. And Citizens Advice came on board and said they would do that. So they do the assessment and they refer them to us and then we just get the food parcel. But since COVID, we've got now... Um, uh, so our fridge is always almost there every day for everybody, anybody. We've got the food bank for referrals. We've got the hygiene bank if anybody's referred from citizen advice. We've got the um, clothes bank. We've got socks, shoes, not shoes, sorry, socks, small sweatshirts, trousers, just basics. And we've got a pet bank um, that just happened in the last few weeks. From a simple idea to a coordinated masterclass, the community fridge has ignited a whole enterprise. Recycling from what some see as waste and redistributing it to those who need it the most. Look at this, there's oh loads of God. it. Oh my God, there is so much Head food. Literally to toe, yeah, yeah. from down here to up here. No space for anything. No, you can't get any more in it. The detail, like you've labelled everything. Down here, we have labelled custard 2023. So like, this is... The organisation, you are what my wife would call a dream. Food, food like that comes in, as you see, it's not going to stay. It's, it's lovely food that's come from the yeah. supermarkets. And sometimes some people haven't even tried those foods. And so it's like, oh, can let me try this. Yeah. Because the prices, they can't afford it. It's their weekly food bill. So who gives you this food in here? Um, so we've had funding that we've had from Oxford Community Foundation, Children's Council, Oxford Community, um, Oxford, uh, also, yeah, Oxford County Council, so our funders, some of our funders. So you can go and buy it? Um, Yes, we've bought parcel, food parcels. The people at the mosque have donated money as well, so we've put some, some money from that. Um, we've got a fair share. They've got a big warehouse in Didcot, so they've supplied us some food over COVID. The fear that everybody had about COVID, as you know, we didn't know what to expect. So we didn't have the stock to supply. So we had to have it in, inside the mosque. So what we had to do is move, empty that room, because that was our library. Yeah. So then over COVID, we had to move it all into here. The only thing we could think of that was a quick fix was a container and racking. Um, over COVID was our main challenge in time. We had to rise to the occasion. Um, like I said, we didn't have an email address. So we set up an email address. The taxi drivers were all on furlough. So we used the taxi drivers uh, to do the food parcels, to deliver the food parcels. We're delivering it in excess of four or 500 parcels a day. Nobody was hungry in Banbury. Nobody went without food. Everybody had a food parcel, whether they were furloughed or they were social distancing or they were just not well or had no money. Did it, did it matter about you? Does it matter about your circumstances? They would get a food parcel. We didn't question that because we didn't have time to question. We didn't want to question. We didn't want anybody to go hungry. That was the main thing. And when COVID hit, we were all sort of like not sure what was going to happen. The way it was thrown at us is that we're going to have no food. Supermarkets are going to close. When it became a thing and you saw people come in to collect the food and you saw obviously through Covid you had taxi drivers come in to deliver the food and the community really came together to do some amazing things. How did that make you feel once you, you, know, once you saw that you'd agreed to that and you were behind it kind of happening? Uh, at the time uh, during Covid we didn't have a chance to think. It was that busy. Uh, we were having pallets and pallets uh, which were coming in delivery and then to get rid of them. Uh, I think at the height of it, we had 48, we counted 48 volunteers from all uh, different backgrounds. Uh, we didn't quite hit the 50 mark, which would have been nice. Uh, it's a ni nice number, but uh, now that we can, we've got some time and we can look back on it, it makes you feel uh, a sense of satisfaction and happiness, really. Did we really do that? Yes, we did, <laughs> yeah. When we look at all the histories, uh, Islamic books, and all our Islamic scholars, you know, that's how they, did you know, when they uh, wherever they go, uh, they didn't look specifically for their own religion, Islam or Muslim. The, all the communities they help them through the food, 
and uh, feeding the hunger people, helping the needy people. I didn't really think what I was I was in an old drive, so I knew COVID was bad. I knew COVID was dangerous. I knew it, it could kill. I knew the things that would, could happen. Immediately straight into COVID, I'd lost a paternal uncle, my dad's brother, and my dad wasn't able to go to the funeral. And um, I think it was about third week into COVID, and I knew I couldn't stop. And my dad would have probably needed me more, but he knew that I was so busy. He'd leave a message saying, if you're free, just give me a ring. And because I was on such a drive here, then my mum lost a brother, a sister, and uh, my mum lost another cousin brother. And I think it mounted up to about four or five. I lost a very close friend in Banbury. That wasn't to COVID, that was to something, that was cancer. But I didn't have time to grieve because if I stopped to grieve, um, this would have stopped. There wasn't anybody that could take on whilst I took time out to grieve. I think it hit me more when... Um, Five weeks ago, we lost my mother-in-law and my children were grieving. And I, when your loved ones are upset, you feel you've got to be part of that team. And I shared tears. I went to the funeral and I think the icing on the cake was two weeks ago. My mum became very ill after the fasting month and we just thought it was just a bit of sickness. But my mum suffered a stroke. And I think that hit me. Yeah. Because you almost haven't had time to stop and process no. anything, so it's all... Do you think she would have been proud of what you'd done throughout COVID? 100%, 100%. Um, she never doubted me, um, so when I did it ring, she knew that I was busy. She knew that I did it just not ring for the reason. She knew that I was at the mosque. And uh, the well wishes that I got from the community were amazing. Um, but I almost like stopped. I thought, thinking of that, my, my extended family, this was my family, this was my community, and that was my drive. Yeah, to lose six family members. So close. So close, yeah. When you're so busy. And there wasn't a time to think. It's a lot of weight on your shoulders, isn't it? Not just what you do here, but actually what you do for your family. Stuff, isn't it? Do you ever take time for yourself? No. Do you think you should? I have said that July and August are my months, uh, hopefully. But, <laughs> but I say that all the time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, July and August are my months, so let's see what happens. July is my birthday, so I'm hoping this could be two months for me. What Yasmin and co have achieved is nothing short of amazing. The community fridge helped bear the weight of the COVID-19 pandemic and continues to grow to this day. This is our future, you know, we're living here, so we want to uh, leave uh, something good. So our next generation is coming, you know, so they can look at that and they see how, how the uh, elder was living, how they have connected with the local community, so how they can uh, make better relation with the local community. But we are here now, so we have to try our best. It's been fantastic, and I, I was just, when I was out there a minute ago, I was thinking it'd be good to sort of see the progression in, in photographs, how, how it's all, and as well as the garden and all the tubs, how, how um, all these structures have, 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 have sort of come come to be. I think think it um, it's good, for, definitely good for the community, and probably good for so many people that you don't really sort of realise maybe some a lot of people people that, that, you know, very much different people from all different places and different areas and different backgrounds and stuff like that. And um, and it's it's really good to, to be a, such a positive thing, really, isn't it, in the community, so. You can't cherry pick. Um, it's like you can't say, oh, I'm going to help these people, but not those people because of their, some quality that isn't their choice. They need help, they're people. And yeah, we should be doing more to look after the environment but I'm you know to the credit of the supermarkets that they are giving this food and supporting the project um, which you know is extra work for them and they're doing it and that's brilliant and you know thank you to them for doing that and we've opened up the doors to everybody uh, and uh, I believe we're not going to engage how are we going to know each other it's like your neighbor um, people can uh, live next door to a neighbor not know and, and I think how you know just say hello just say hello to each other. Yeah.
uh, uh, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to be a Muslim to come and, you know, be part of the, uh, the community fridge. It's open for everybody to come and help. So that's one thing that's integrated us all as a community. And, you know, everybody knows about it, you know, on Facebook, social media. It's just fantastic, you know. And this is a really true face of Islam, you know, that uh, helping everybody, because everyone is the creation of the God. And, uh, you know, God and everyone is equal, same. So it's good to you know, everybody coming in the God's house and they're getting help from here. And uh, it's very good. Hopefully, July and August truly were Yasmin's mums. The people of Banbury Mosque have truly shown what's possible when you open your doors and welcome everyone. To find out more, head to ordinarykindness.co.uk or to donate, go on the Just Giving page and type in Ordinary Kindness. One of the teachings that we've got from the Prophet is um, uh, you should never sleep if you know your neighbour is hungry.